This is Gabe Cook with Debate Kansas City, and today I'm going to talk to you about a new file release, and I'm going to give you a new method to try to win debates on the affirmative. Uh, essentially, what we've done is we have repackaged the discourse of poverty critique so that you can actually turn it into an affirmative argument. And when you deploy this argument on the affirmative, you can totally change the complexion of the debate round. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through and I'm going to talk about First, I'll give you an overview of this argument, then I'll tell you when you would run it, then I'll tell you why you would run it, and then I'll show you how you would run this new discourse of poverty argument. So let's give an overview a little bit of what this argument is. Um, the discourse of poverty critique, as we uh, have explained before, looks at the way we talk about the issue of poverty. And there's a lot of social critics out there that say that, that one of the problems that we have with the issue of poverty is that we tend to blame people. And we say that, oh, you you made some sort of choice or you did something wrong in your life and that's why you're poor. And that when we rationalize poverty that way and we blame individuals, we fail to fix the system. And we also end up kind of pushing people aside and, and really treating them unjustly. And that a lot of the root cause of a number of our problems um, are because that we treat the poor unjustly and because we view them as separate from everybody else. So what the critique says is that we need to rethink the way that we talk about the issue of poverty and we need to view all people as connected. That you know how much money you have is just one aspect of you. It doesn't define you as many people think when they talk about the issue of poverty. So that's sort of a brief overview of what the discourse of poverty critique is. And traditionally, this is something that you would run on the negative. The affirmative would stand up and talk about how they're going to fix the problem of poverty and maybe some of the language that they use and some of the rationale for why they say we need to address the issue of poverty would give you a link into this criticism. But what I'm going to tell you is that you, if you run an affirmative case and it doesn't link into the discourse of poverty critique, then when the negative team stands up and makes their arguments, you might actually be able to critique them. Let me give you a hypothetical scenario. Let's say that you're running a case, let's say you're running community schools, and your argument is that we have a, a school-wide and a system-wide failure to provide equal education, and that we need grassroots efforts from the ground up um, in order to fix our education system. And then what, once that happens, it will give more people opportunity and the issue of poverty won't be such a big issue anymore. And if you phrased it in those ways, you might avoid a link to the poverty critique. Okay, so that was your argument on the affirmative. Now let's say the negative team stands up and they make some arguments and they say, you know what, Pro uh, poverty is a choice that people choose to be poor, that people actually live in pretty good conditions, and that anyone who wants to can go out and get a job and get themselves out of poverty. Well, if they made that argument, it would definitely be a link into this discourse of poverty critique, and you could deploy it at that time. Or let's say, even more commonly, the negative stands up and says, you know what, poverty may be a problem, but we just can't afford to fix it. It's going to cost too much money, it's going to be unfair to the taxpayers to spend all this money on basically welfare. Well, that would also be a link to your argument. And so then, we would get into the discourse of poverty critique. So, when would you run this critique? That's the first question that we've begun to address here. Well, as I just described, it's typically you are going to run it in the 2A seat. So you've read your first affirmative constructive, the negative has stood up and made their arguments, then if you have a link, you would read it in the 2A seat. Now, um, when else? Well, you need them to make, them being the negative team, to make some type of link arguments. And if they blame people for poverty, or if they make arguments about money, then you're going to be able to get a link to the critique, as I just described a few moments ago. So, if in the first negative constructive they blame people for the problem of poverty, or they read a spending disadvantage, then in the 2AC you can read your discourse of poverty critique. Now, you might be asking yourself, well, why would I run this critique? What's the purpose behind it? Well, I see two major purposes behind um, running this critique. The first we're going to call new O. And what I mean by new O is you have a new source of offense or a new way that you can win the debate. 
you can say that their discourse causes some harm and that harm is the most important issue in this debate round. What they've said and our critique of it is more important than any other issue. And so it's a new way that you can win the debate round. It's a new source of offense. The other reason that you might run this critique is because you have a genuine desire to change discourse. That you don't like the way that people talk about the issue of poverty, that you believe the arguments that are made in the evidence in the discourse of poverty critique, and you really genuinely want to let people know, hey, we should talk about the issue of poverty differently. We shouldn't blame the poor for their problems, and we shouldn't just say that they're not worth taxpayer dollars. That really what we're doing is, is we are otherizing them, and we're making them less than human, and that that is unethical. And you really want to take a stand in the debate round and make that argument, and that would be a perfectly legitimate reason to run this critique. So finally, okay, how do you do it? How do you make this happen? Well, you would want to go to the Debate Kansas City resources link and uh, have your coach give you the password. You'll find the Discourse of Poverty critique sitting right there. And when you open the file and you look at it, you're going to notice that it will have three pieces of evidence in the shell. A link, it's got an impact, and it has an alternative. The link argument is evidence that talks about when we discuss the issue of poverty, we often take the poor and separate them and make them different from the us. And that justifies different kind of treatment of them. And the evidence says that as long as we view the poor as separate and really less than human, that we will never ever fix the problem of poverty. The second piece of evidence, the impact, says that this type of separation, this way that we, we say, oh, those are the poor people and these are the good people, that type of separation is the root cause of violence in our society. So as long as we continue to have this terrible poverty mindset, talk about people in poverty in this negative way, then we are inevitably going to cause more and more violence. So your argument, the impact in this debate round, is that the other team's discourse justifies uh, violence. So that's a pretty good impact. And then finally, you have the alternative. And the evidence is really specific, and it says that what we need to do is analyze the way we talk about the issue of poverty in debate rounds. And the evidence says that if we reformulate the way that we talk about the issue of poverty in debate rounds, then we can lead to positive change and we can break down these stereotypes. So, you're going to read the shell in the 2AC, which is what I just described. The three pieces of evidence you'll find on the index that it's called the shell. And so after you've read that in the 2AC, your opponents are surely going to have something to say about it. They're going to try to defend their discourse. They're going to give reasons why your uh, critique isn't very good. What you need to make sure you do as you go throughout the debate is to extend the voting issue. And what you need to do is you need to say over and over again that it's the most important issue in the debate round. And people phrase it a lot of different ways. Uh, some people will say fiat is an illusion, the debate round isn't real. And that's why discourse comes first. Basically, here's what all that means. Okay, what you want to argue when you're deploying this critique is that at the end of this debate round, no policy is actually going to pass. Congress won't take up the affirmative plan, and, and Congress um, won't do the negative counter plan, or whatever it is. Okay, this is just a debate round. So what's most important in a debate round isn't some type of outcome, some policy that we could or could not pass. The most important issue in any debate round is the way that we talk within the round, the discourse, the way we represent ourselves, and the way we represent others as we speak about them with issues ranging from um, you know, poverty to, to who knows what. But the way that we talk about issues is the most important thing in the debate round, and that's what you want to tell the judge. You want to say that your opponents and the way that they talk about poverty is really problematic, in fact, terribly negative. And it means that we can never fix the issue of poverty. It means that we separate the poor from everybody else, which is the root cause of structural violence. And you've got evidence that says we can break down those stereotypes in a debate round. So it's the perfect venue. So you want to say that this is the most important issue. It's a voting issue. So here's just kind of a different sort of way to approach the affirmative and to run the discourse of poverty critique when on the affirmative. Hope it helps and good luck to you.